Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we are going to make a table runner kit, but we're going to modify it into a table topper. So it's not going to be the long table runner. You can take our log cabin table runner kits and make them square. So I'm going to pick one out. So I want to get one that would look really good in a table topper. So this one would work because that would be the patchwork. The border that's in it would make one border. The backing then will get turned into a border. That's a pretty one, but um, this one would actually be way better because the border will be very interesting. This is from Northcott. It's called Artisan Spirit. That's the group of fabrics. And so this is a table runner kit. But we're going to take this apart and we have a modification sheet that tells how to turn this into a table topper. So let's go over to the workroom and let's get started and get it sewn up. So this kit would normally make the table runner here. It's got patchwork, it's got borders, it's got backing. So that's all included in this package. But instead of making this table runner, we've got a modification sheet that will tell you how to make it into a table topper. So say you have a round table or you, you don't want a long runner, you want the square instead or you want a small wall hanging. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna turn this into the square. So this is the most fun part about our kits. This is really the only cutting you have to do. I've got my little snippers here. All you have to do is cut open that plastic. That's all the cutting you have to do to make one of our kits. So you just take the pieces out, start sewing. So this is all the log cabin patchwork here. We've got our lights, we've got our darks. And of course there's a picture of the block in here. So there's a numbered picture of the block. Now I've made so many of them that I don't follow the numbered picture. I just stack these up in order and start sewing. So get the glasses. We've got four center squares here. And these have kind of a directional pattern. They've got kind of a stripe, so I'm going to keep them all going the same way. And this has kind of a stripe also. It's not really a stripe, it's a dotted stripe, but I'm going to keep these all going the same direction. Usually I will do that when I'm sewing patchwork. If it's directional, I'm going to keep them all going the same way. Now I'm going to chain piece these. I always make my log cabin blocks chain piecing, and that means I'm not cutting between this blocks. I'm not making block at a time. I'm making all four at the same time. So we're using a quarter inch seam. Always use a quarter inch seam. And I just sew those in one long row. Snip between them. Pick them up. Give them a quarter turn. Now I'm going to open them up. I'm not going to iron. I'm just going to finger press. And I'm going to stitch the next piece on. Now all the rest of the pieces, you don't have to worry about them being directional because they're not square. There's only one way they will fit on there. So this piece is going to fit right on here and the stripes are always going to be going in the direction that we need them to go in. So you can see how quickly these sew together. Since there's only four blocks, it really doesn't take very long. Give it another turn, open it up and finger press, take the next piece, it fits on exactly. So it may look a little like I'm just flinging these together, but I've just sewn a lot of log cabin blocks, so I don't want you to think I'm not being careful. I really know exactly where the pieces are. So you know when you're sewing here, I'll just give you a little hint. Your piece could come over like that, or you could have this back way underneath there. So you want to make sure that these edges are lined up exact and you know where those are. 
And so you can see I'm sometimes adjusting it with my little finger there. So don't feel like you have to go fast just because I'm going fast. You have to go at a speed that works for you. Now you can see the blocks are really starting to build here. This fabric is from Northcott and it's called Artisan Spirit and we call this colorway Shimmer and it's got just a little bit of metallic gold accent and it really does give the patterns a lot of depth. You can see all these little swirlies and little dotted lines and the metallic gives it an extra layer of texture when you look at it. I really like the little teeny bit of bling. We do a lot of metallic combinations, a lot of batik combinations, and of course we like the really bright stuff like a K-Facet too, but this is just very, very pretty. So there's the four log cabin blocks. Now we'll finger press this last one open. And then we'll take them over to the ironing board and actually give them a nice pressing. All right. Okay, even though we finger pressed the block all the way around when we were sewing, you can see it's not completely flat and it really is important to get it completely flat. So I can feel with my hands that the seam allowances are all going away from the center. If you're not sure, you can iron it from this side first because here you can see they're all going away. So sometimes I'll just iron it from the back a little bit so that I can make sure those seam allowances are all going away from the center, and then flip it over. I'm gonna steam press it a little bit. You wanna block it square, so you don't wanna have it pulled one way or the other or dipped in. You wanna make sure that when you iron it, it's nice and square. All right, that one looks good. Now we cut all the patchwork on the lengthwise grain of the fabric. So this is not cut in the direction that a jelly roll is cut in. It's cut on the lengthwise grain. And that means when you go to iron it here, it's really flat and it doesn't, doesn't give much. It, um, it's really easy to iron it flat. If these were on the crosswise grain, each fabric would be giving quite a bit more in this direction, so it doesn't stretch at all. The logs just don't stretch. And that makes this step really, really fast. So there's options with the log cabin. That's one of the nice things about the log cabin block. We've got four blocks here. We're gonna make a square table topper. So this is one of our favorite layouts. You've got a diamond shaped guy. Sometimes we want light in the middle. So you can turn each block around. So maybe you want the light in the middle with the dark on the outside. You can also do a straight furrow. So that would be, it's kind of a diagonal looking guy, like that. I do that more often in quilts. Usually on the table topper, I'm going to want the diamond shape. So one factor is what do our borders look like? So let's grab the borders. 
So here's the border and back fabrics that came in the package. So normally, this would be on the back of the runner and this would be on the borders. So this is what we're gonna, we're gonna use this as a first border and we're going to use this as an outer border. So we want to kind of get an idea of what looks nice around here. So I'm really thinking that the dark in the middle is going to look the best. So the table runners, you have to open the package and see what the borders look like. Some table runners have a light border. Then I might want light in the middle. But in this case, see how nice that looks up against there? And then this one on the outside. And these are going to go all the way around. That's just going to look beautiful. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the dark in the middle like that. Okay, so the next step is to cut the borders up from the runner. This, is, this would be the long runner border. So instead of using it on there, we're going to put it around here. So those ones don't have to be cut. They're already done to size. This has to be cut down a little, and the back has to be cut a little. So let's grab these. So we've got the modification sheet here. We've got this on our website. So this is just a free download. You can just go to the website and look up exactly how to cut this. So I've got it folded over. So I've got all four pieces that are going to go in the four corners here. Now the backing has to be cut into this outer border. So I'm going to fold it like this. And I'm going to fold it up like this. So it's going to be four layers. Some people don't want to cut that thick. It's pretty easy for me to cut it four layers. But if you're not comfortable cutting that thick, then open it up and only cut two layers at a time. OK, so we've got our four borders here. We're going to sew the blocks together, put on the first brown border, and then we're going to put these guys on. And I think these need to be cut to length too, but I think we'll do that after we make this part. So I'm going to put these in order here. I'm going to stitch down here, stitch down here, and then stitch across. So I'm going to put it like this and like this. And I'm going to stitch down here and then down here. Then I'm going to open them up and do the other seam. So I'm going to carry these carefully over to my machine in this order. So I'm going to stitch down here, leave it on the machine, and then stitch there. So first I'm going to take this guy. These blocks are exactly the same length. Now I'm going to open this up. So let's do our first seam allowance to the left. I'm going to finger press it. I'm pressing it really hard with my fingernail so it stays open. Now we're going to open this one up, and we want that seam allowance going the other way. So this seam allowance is sticking that way, and this seam allowance is sticking that way. The reason we do that is because when we sew this seam now, see you've got one going that way and one going that way, and you can make those, you can make a really nice corner there. You can make a really nice intersection. So I'm going to hold that. I've got them lined up. Now I'm going to stitch all along here. Now we're just going to press that seam to one side or the other. It doesn't matter. It seems to be already be laying this way, so we'll just press that there. All right, so it's laying nice and flat. You can iron it again with your iron if you want, but this is flat enough for me here. So I'm going to grab the borders and we're going to go around. So I've got two long border pieces here. So I'm going to sew one here, one here, one there, one there. So I'm going to take a long one here and go down one side. So I'm going to line up the ends. Okay, so I just went to the end. Now I'm going to cut it off even. To cut this off even with the patchwork, I like to fold it so that it's nice and on top of itself. Not crooked like that or like that, but right on top of itself. And then if I cut right along that line, you can either 
make a line with your fingernail like that, or you can just take your snippers or scissors and cut right along there. You get a nice straight line. Now I'm going to take my other long border and I'm going to go down the other side. Okay, now we're going to take both these borders, we're going to finger press them out with a seam going away from the patchwork. Same with this guy, away from the patchwork. Now we're going to stitch down the other sides. Now when you sew borders on, there's a lot of methods. If you're doing a long quilt, you can measure the quilt, you can pre-cut your borders. I find with smaller items, if I have got this cut on the lengthwise grain, it's not going to give. These are on the lengthwise grain, they're not going to give. So if you just place them down together, don't stretch the top, don't stretch the bottom, just put them right on top of each, right on top of themselves. All four borders on, we're going to go back to the cutting table and we're going to cut our long borders of this exact length. So now we've got the top done, ready for the outer border. So we need to see exactly how long to cut this border. It's the, we're going to cut the outer border this exact same length because we've got cornerstones. So now we're going to put We'll do the side ones on here. And then these two rows, we're going to sew the pieces onto the ends. So I'm going to sew those onto there, these onto here, these onto this. So we'll take it over to the machine. All right, so we'll sew the cornerstones onto the ends here. Let's sew these guys on. We've got the last two borders, one for each side. All right, let's take this over to the ironing board, give it one last pressing. So I like to finger press during the sewing, but when I'm done, I like to use the steam press and get it really, really flat. Let's finish up. Okay, so we've got the whole top done now. That really didn't take very long at all. And look at how awesome it looks. I mean, that is really a nice table topper. I love the borders. I love the cornerstones. It's nice and flat. It's just a quick, quick project. So say you want to, for instance, give someone a table runner for their table. And maybe in the den, they've got a coffee table, an end table. You want to make one of these to match. It's really, really quick. Now, I haven't quilted it yet. So you can put this on your long arm if you like, or you can use the flip method. That's what we do a lot. That's what we did on the runner here. So you'll notice the runner does not have binding. So I put it front to back, right sides together on top of a piece of batting. I stitched around the edge and I left an opening and then I flipped it. So you could do that with this. This is small enough to quilt on your home machine. You could go in the ditch. You can go around the blocks, you can go around here, around here, around here, or again, put it on your long arm machine and have a lot of fun. So these directions are on our website. So if you go to Jordan Fabrics, there's just a page that says table topper modification. So you can turn your runner into a table topper. Thanks for watching the video. Give it the thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sorry, what? I okay. got it. Is it already filming? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. I'll just see how long you okay. wait. All right, go ahead.